Well, good morning, Lakeview, wherever you are today. Good morning. I hope God is blessing you and uh, richly filling your life in these days. I'm Pastor John Fairchild. For those who may not know me, uh, we are uh, reaching a lot of uh, different areas than we're used to. Uh, we're reaching North Carolina and Oregon and uh, all kinds of places thanks to the technology. But as you've seen this morning, sometimes live technology can be a little bit of a challenge. So I give thanks for our uh, media arts team who is working hard. When there are challenges like that, just be patient and wait, and uh, they're rest assured they're working on it and aware of it because they're monitoring everything as we go. So give thanks for your patience on that. Um, do want to mention that we are going to be sharing in Holy Communion this morning. So uh, if you don't have your elements prepared, you might want to grab a little bread or a cracker and uh, some juice. Whatever you have on hand is fine, and uh, we'll be sharing in Holy Communion. My intent is for the remainder of the time that we are meeting in this uh, way that we're going to share a communion each week, so you can plan on that as well. I want to invite your comments uh, and uh, on both uh, Facebook when this is later posted on Facebook and on our live comments and uh, YouTube as uh, the Lord leads you. How is you? How are you being blessed by what is happening? What you're hearing? What the Word is is speaking into your hearts? We love to have that. Finally, I want to invite you to have your Bibles at hand because we'll be working in Acts chapter 2 this morning, and so I want to invite you to be ready, and uh, so you can read along as well. It's always good to follow along with our liturgists. Thank you, Eli, for reading for us today. Always appreciate our lay people who are reading and, and helping us with worship, limited as it may be during this period of time. Would you pray with me as we turn to the Word? Holy God, now as we consider the words of uh, Acts chapter 2, the actions of the early church, Lord, I pray you would speak through me and use me to your ends. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, right now, quite a few of you here in uh, the valley are missing spring training baseball. We're in such an uncertain period and redefining so many different things today. Scott Fitzgerald famously called baseball the faith of 50 million people. And you might remember Susan Sarandon's opening lines in the movie Bull Durham, where she said this, I believe in the church of baseball. For instance, there are 180, 108 beads in the Catholic rosary, and there are 108 stitches in a baseball. And the only church that truly feeds the soul day in and day out is the church of baseball. Well, and then there's this observation from the wisdom of the philosopher, scholar, and comedian, George Carlin, who talked about the spiritual nature of baseball by pointing out the difference between baseball and football. He said this, in football, the object is for the quarterback, otherwise known as the field general, to hit his receivers with deadly accuracy, with short bullet passes and long bombs. He marches his troops into enemy territory. And contrast that with baseball, the object is to go home and be safe. Well, I don't know about the church of baseball, but what are we to do with this new church that we're in? Lakeview, you remember just a couple of years ago how hard it was to accept the screens here in the sanctuary and projecting images and, and uh, the words of our, our worship service. I suspect now if we took those screens down and you were here, we'd have a passel of complaints. What was strange and new and different is now common and expected. Now we've been forced into this new way of worship, calling in on the phone, or watching on your computer or smart TV. Now I know that many people have been watching various uh, television evangelists and religious programs on TV with worship, and a lot of us remember Billy Graham's crusades when they were televised. So in a way, this isn't so new after all. 
the medium we're using, computers and uh, uh, calling in and recording, uh, is new. But we're doing it all by recording and live mix like today is very new. What is new is that really you don't have a choice in this. My question for you today really centers around a very simple thought or question. What is God doing with this new thing? In a mixed metaphor, how are we encountering God in this new baseball game we're in? Now, when we look at the account of the early church in Acts chapter 2, we see this fledgling body gathering in the euphoric waters of Pentecost. This was an event so dramatic and so tangible that the entire city of Jerusalem was impacted. Verse 41 tells us that over 3,000 people were baptized into the faith today, that day. Can you imagine if that happened today? 3,000 people, what would we do? Your pastors might be giddy with excitement, but more than a little overwhelmed. It was a new church, a new thing, and nobody was familiar with, with it or comfortable with it. And they were trying to figure out how do we guide people into this new faith? How do we teach them what Jesus wanted them to know? They must have been forming small groups all over town, and the disciples, along with the first followers, were carrying messages and teaching each of these small groups who would in turn teach others. It was the spring of the church when the temperature, humidity, and soil of human need was just right to see this new church. In reality, it really is the first Christian reality, revival. Now we see what this new church was about in our text today in verses 42 to 47 of Acts chapter 2. In there we see that there are four primary activities of that new church. Teaching, fellowship, sharing meals together, and prayer. They needed to learn the basics of Jesus' teaching, so they learned about his three-year ministry and the basics of faith that we covered here at Lakeview from January 21st to March 23rd in the sermon series, Three Simple Steps of Grace. Today, this modern day that we're in now, we also include scriptures, the teaching from uh, the scriptures before Jesus, the Old Testament, as well as teaching that followed him, all the letters of the gospel that follow the gospel accounts. Teaching today is the heart of preaching, plus the Bible studies that we offer, and your personal study and other ways that you reach out by uh, studying online with others and taking other Bible studies. Second, they fellowship together. Our faith is relational, and we need each other both to encourage and to hold accountable. Now, fellowship is more than just, you know, passing the peace like some churches do, or just coming in and saying, hey, I'm glad to see you today. Isn't this a beautiful day? That's just a social greeting. True fellowship is listening to one another, knowing what's going on in your life as well as mine. We need to know where we struggle and where we rejoice. It's learning each other's stories of faith and life and knowing the pain that we all experience through life. Now, this is sometimes very hard work because we touch on emotions and the pain in our soul, but it's essential and integral for our life together. It may even be more difficult now because we do not always see each other face to face so I want to encourage you to seek out ways to do that, either by phone or video conferences like Zoom or even the neighbor over the neighborhood fence, but stay in contact with each other. Be the one to reach out and check, and check in. Some of you have done that with me during afternoon sip and chat, and I'm so grateful for those moments when we've called in. Now let me say something about what we're doing with these Zoom meetings. I know it's new, I know some of you are struggling to get on, Remember, you can call uh, our media arts director, Glade. You can call me and we'll help you walk through that. Uh, it's worth the effort to be able to stay in touch. And it doesn't matter where you are. 
If you're in North Carolina or Oregon or Ohio or Florida uh, or Mexico, we want you to be a part of what we're doing. So we invite you to join us for a Bible study or one of our Zoom fellowship times when we can get together. Now, when the first church gathered for meals, this third thing, sharing meals together, it included the slaves and servants, the poor and the strangers. This was the church in mission, sharing one's bounty with one another so that all were, had enough food. Now, it often took the shape of a, uh, a love feast where people would gather and uh, someone might share some of uh, uh, the Old Testament scriptures, which was all they had at the time, or they might share a teaching from Jesus, and then they would share in this feast together. And after the meal, uh, they would be, the poor would be able to take the leftovers to feed themselves and their families through the rest of that week. So this love feast was more than just about a meal together. It was really mission, taking care of the poor and needy in their midst. Now, fourth, the uh, early church spent a lot of time in prayer, both in personal retreats away from others, but also together. Now, they undoubtedly sang the prayers of the Psalms and others, even as they prayed for individual needs for each other. There was fruit from this work as well. Verse 42 notes that they were in awe of the signs and wonders. How is your prayer life? Who are you praying for? What are you giving thanks for? As you pray, be alert to answers which may come in very surprising and unexpected ways. Pray the Psalms, pray scriptures, and don't forget to listen quietly for God to answer. What we used to teach our children before crossing the street works really well here. Stop, look, listen. Don't forget, tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, we have a brand new class starting up on, on Zoom, Power of Prayer, 10 a.m. You can find the information for that on our website. Uh, on this, what's coming this week, I think, is what it's titled. Well, that first church was nearly perfect, weren't they? They were all together. They had everything in common. They shared what they had with the needy. They met continually. They shared meals with glad and sincere hearts. And they praised God together. The result was a sincere faith that was lived out in their daily lives. And this resulted in a grand, a grand harvest. The word tells us that the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved on top of the 3,000. You see, there's always fruit when we live faithfully as disciples. Sadly, the summer of discontent came with the heat of a burning sun and there was dissent and trouble in the church. Our humanity, pride, and greed began to creep into this daily life of the church and thus the need for the letters of the New Testament to the churches and leaders to remind them and bring them back in. We always need that. As humans, we, we may be saved, we may know Jesus well, but we tend to drift away and try to do it our way, don't we? We still need all of that teaching today. But we're no longer bound to the proximity of our unaided voices and eyes as we share the gospel of Jesus. With the simple aid of a microphone and a sound system, I could talk to thousands of people. With a phone or computer, you can talk to anyone that you know around the world. Right now, today, with our live stream, we're reaching hundreds of people, not only here in the valley, but around the country and other places. And right now, through the next week, even more people will hear about the good news of Jesus, how much God loves you. Together we are engaging this gospel of good news in ways that are, are exciting and, and a little bit new. Now many have speculated what the church of the mid 21st century is gonna look like. And a lot of those speculations have been pretty pessimistic. I'm a lot less pessimistic about that, let me tell you. 
Many have predicted, on the other hand, that a revival is coming, and perhaps we are on the cusp of that new church, or perhaps we're actually the leading edge of a new revival of faith. If it takes a pandemic for people to turn to Jesus, then let's be ready. You have a role by participating, cooperating, and praying, and communicating in every way that you can think of. And we still share in mission as we support the food bank, missionaries, the Heifer Project, water projects, and our neighbors, and caring for one another. You see, teaching, fellowship, sharing, and prayer, when you do these with glad and sincere hearts. God answers. He responds and there is fruit. May we always be a fruitful church for the cause of Jesus Christ. Amen.